I want to show two very interesting and fun cases where I used the anterior ankle fusion plate. The first was a lady that was in a motor car accident in 2010. She had multiple injuries, including a femur fracture that was treated with an intermodulary rod. This went on to a male union and she had a revision done. Unfortunately, during the revision, uh, which took a long time, she developed a compartment syndrome. And uh, these are some of the pictures, obviously, in 2010 with the initial rotting that looked fine. And then 2012, we can see this a non-union with a valgus a malalignment with broken screws. This was during the revision. And interestingly enough, the surgeon was concerned about the vascular supply. So did an arteriogram prior to surgery to make sure everything is there, but still something happened. And with the exchange rotting, she developed a compartment syndrome. So this was initially missed, unfortunately. So this is 10 days later when they did the releases and you can see a big skin flap was needed. And already what often happens with uh, compartment syndrome is that you forget to splint the foot in neutral position or in dorsiflexion. So she ended up with almost a 90 degree contracture. And this was uh, really a sad story because she was told she can either have an amputation or have a build up shoe. So they made a shoe for her that allowed her to walk with her foot in this position, which also meant that she needed a build up shoe on the other side to allow her to walk. But it was a fairly miserable time for her. So I saw her basically as an amputation consultation and said, well, uh, there are other options. So we decided instead of an amputation to attempt a fusion and the biggest issue always are the posterior structures when you try to bring it to 90 degrees. So I had to lengthen her Achilles, FHL, FDL, and tibialis posterior, and also a posterior capsular release, and fortunately brought her back to 90, and everything went fine, except as expected, when you lengthen them that much in the back, uh, we needed a skin graft as well. The photo on the right is three months later, where her foot is planted great. You can still see all the scars from the previous fasciotomies, but she did spectacular, and now she can be in a normal shoe and ambulate without those huge build-up shoes and obviously a very satisfied patient that healed her fusion very quickly. Doing very well now, she f does fairly normal activities. She's currently training for her first 10 kilometer walk, which she's very excited about. The next case is basically where I started with the fusion plate. I used to use just screws or some form of fixation, but this was um, Grade four tibialis posterior tendon dysfunction, the typical middle age older patient and typically significantly overweight. This patient was also told nothing can be done. He had an Arizona brace for a long time, but even with that, never pain free. Really could not walk without crutches. Developed a fibular stress fracture in the Arizona brace and the big problem a BMI of 48. So as expected, nobody wanted to touch the patient. So if you look at the x-rays, there's a 45 degree valgus deformity um, in the ankle itself. And on the lateral view, the typical completely flat foot. So these are very complicated issues to fix because there are multiple deformities and then the issue of the BMI. You can see where the calcaneus sits and that's why there was a stress fracture of the fibula because all the weight goes directly on the fibula. So this is one year later. This is obviously, as you can see, not just an ankle fusion, also did a subtalar fusion to bring the hind foot back in alignment. You need some form of a rocker bottom shoe if you have a TTC fusion, but in the old days where this was a situation where the patient was basically limited to Arizona brace and limited activities, and now you can bring them in a plantigrade position and they can walk with fairly normal shoes. I started using the Arthrex ankle plating system for the really very complicated fusions where there were no good alternatives. Um, and then with the agility of the system and the various options, I use it now for a lot of my primary fusions as well because patients can walk a little bit sooner and the fusion rate is just so much higher than with just a screw technique. And I also learned over time that there are different options with the plating system that allows you to do about any fusion.